Hello, and welcome to Rocks. This is an independently produced television series that we've been making since 1992. We started off in a basement in Bloomington, Indiana. In fact, I'll play you a clip from that right now, from our very first episode, in which Jay mixes up an amaretto sound. I am going to Midwestern, guys. No, we're getting kind of low on our sweet and sour bar mix, so I think I'm going to only be able to make one of these. Well, you but fucker. we will split it forthrightly. Uh, this is right. the I'm going to take the volume down a little bit. Because uh, uh, there we are, just a, a couple of drunken fools mixing up drinks uh, in the basement. That's Jay there. He's the bartender. I'm B. I'm the editor. But, you know, a lot has changed since then. In fact, uh, we live now on opposite ends of the country. Jay is in Missoula, Montana. And I am here in New Orleans. Just three years after we shot that, that very crude video, just three years later, in 1995, we became the first television series on the internet, believe it or not. That was 10 years, actually, before the launch of YouTube. 10 years. In fact, this clip that I'm just playing here, this uh, Amaretto Sour clip, was the first clip from our series that I put on YouTube. But it was not the, actually the first clip of video I put on YouTube. I, you know, I was a little distracted at the time. YouTube, you may remember, launched about the same time as Hurricane Katrina. Living in New Orleans, you can imagine, I was a little bit distracted. So the first video I actually put on YouTube uh, was this one. It has no audio. As you can see, it's a big, big old crane tearing a house down. We were concerned about uh, demolition. Uh, unwarranted demolitions during this period. This was, oh, and then this guy walks in and tries to tell me to stop, stop shooting the video. Pretty funny stuff. I, I uploaded this video. I published it on YouTube in February 24, 2006. Okay, that was just uh, two months after the official launch of YouTube. So not, not too bad, given that I was living, living in a disaster zone. But what I wanted to know is it's been viewed 802 times. So let's compare that statistically to this uh, Amaretto Sour video, which has been viewed 2,880 times. Back when we were producing television for cable access, we had no idea how many people were tuning in. We never had numbers, we never had ratings. In fact, YouTube gives me so many statistics on the videos that we've put up here, it's kind of ridiculous. So let's, let's find out what is the most viewed video in the lifetime of my account. Aha! And so here we have it, the most watched video. Let's give it a whirl. Not in the path of lust like the heathen who know no God. Finally, Romans 1, verse 24. Therefore, God gave them over to the sinful desires of their hearts, to sexual impurity, for the degrading of their bodies with one another. So toe sucking, yes, toe sucking is in fact the number one video, statistically speaking. Uh, that's the wonderful Alice Wolfson, by the way. This video has been viewed uh, 4,225 times, incredibly. This is our 99th episode, actually, rocks number 99. Go viral or die trying. People ask us all the time, or people ask me, or maybe I just wonder it to myself, if I'm so smart, how come I'm not rich? If I'm so savvy with uh, the media and the video and uh, the, the internet and stuff, then how come I'm not at least social media famous? We're looking at statistics, just trying to see what successes we have had here on this platform. So besides just looking at the number of total number of views, we can actually also look at the total amount of time watched, which may not be the same. In fact, it often isn't. The most watched video is one that we produced especially for this episode. It's never been featured in a previous episode of Rocks. It's never been really featured anywhere. I need all the likes I can get. And now, Councilmember Volan. This is from the mayor's office. Whereas, although Joe Nickel and Bart Everson didn't set out to become television pioneers, that's exactly what happened when JNB on the Rocks hit the airwaves, quote unquote, on July 7, 1992. And whereas, with little broadcast experience, a fair amount of Midwestern chutzpah, and absolutely no budget, 
Joe and Bart, hereafter referred to as J&B, soon became a weekly late night fixture, attracting a loyal fan base of students, sleepwalkers, sleepwalking students, bouncers, barflies, retired mixologists, and insomniacs. And whereas week after week, Carl Orff's O Fortuna signaled the start of something somewhat magical as J&B pushed the bounds of free speech and good taste for a full 30 minutes. And whereas, and whereas, and whereas, and whereas, and whereas, and whereas, now therefore I, Mark Cruzan, Mayor of Bloomington, do hereby proclaim July 7th, 2013, as National Rocks Day in Bloomington, Indiana, in honor of the 21st anniversary of this groundbreaking TV show. Here to receive the uh, proclamation is B, Bart Everson. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, this really means a lot, and uh, I, I just wanted to say thank you to the people of, of Bloomington, because really, there's no place else we feel like this sh television show could have gotten started, that no place else it could have really emerged. And I, I know, Steve, that you are, uh, you know, you got your five-minute limit, so I'll keep my comments very brief. Uh, there's. I guess really just one other thing I want to say. So this is out on, going out on cats right now, right? We're going out to the local uh, television viewers. And so I would just ask everybody in this room and all the people at home, is there any, are any of you on Facebook? Anybody on Facebook? Anybody? Any, just a, a couple of people? Great, because listen, I need all the likes I can get because I got all the haters that I need. If I didn't take control of this entire show, then they wouldn't call me Editor B. Hit it, T. Boom. 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 I'm feeling this. It's hard to maintain this lifestyle. They're giving so much love to a city far away when I'd rather just be chilling in B-Town. As I always just wanted to stay. But that was 21 years ago. When I started this show with a guy named Joe, and now it's not too surprising you can feel my chi rising, because I'm back here on Bloomington soil. Now they say there's a mystic energy that emanates from the limestone below. That's right, T. If there's one thing that Bloomingtonians are known for, it's that they love their local native mineral deposits. That's right, B. Never let it be said that Bloomingtonians don't like their rocks. And that's why we like Bloomingtonians. And that's what makes this long-distance relationship so complicated. And that's why we're using social media. And that's why we need all the likes we can get. Because we got all the haters that we need. We Uh, no, wait, Christy, please. If there's one thing that we've learned over the years, it's that we're all about the love, all about sharing the love. This isn't just about me. This is about all of you. This is, you see, you may have considered this just another meeting of the Bloomington Common Council, but this is Rocks, episode number 99. We're videotaping it right now. <laughs> And so we're sharing this love with all of the Rocks crew, which includes every person in this room and every person who's watching this on television right now. So when you like Rocks on Facebook, it's kind of like you're liking yourself. So say it with me now. We, we need, need all, all the, the likes we can get because we got all the haters that we need. To let love flow, you've got to let life grow. So today, we're just planting the seed. Thank you very much, Bloomington. Peace, love, one love, one unity. We're out. I, I would humbly ask the council to consider that to be part of public comment. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Councilmember Volan. We produced that specifically with the aim of trying to make a viral video. It, it only has 906 views, but it has more watch time than anybody else. We, I, I, people watch more of it, in other words, 1,693 minutes. And we can 
you know, zoom in on these statistics, you know, see the little spikes and so forth. This is also our most liked video. Hold on to your hats, folks. It's been liked 45 times. What makes a video viral? Another tried and true method of getting people to watch your video on YouTube supposedly is to put a cute kid in it. And we asked a number of different people if we could feature videos of their kids, and for some reason, people just didn't want to uh, do that. But we did find uh, that my own daughter was willing to play along. So here's a video that she made. Hi, I'm Persephone Everpax. And today I'm going to teach you how to make one of my inventions, banana honey cocos. So let's get started. You need one banana, honey, cocoa, you can use any cocoa that you have, toothpicks, I'm using a butter knife, one of our bigger spoons, and a fork. If you don't know how to flit a banana, just, you just scrape it like this. And try not to let that happen. It's kind of peaceful doing it. And it makes a cool pattern. All right. I'm not going to play the whole video for you. Hopefully that gives you a flavor. You can go online on YouTube and find Banana Honey Cocos and watch the whole thing yourself. It's only six minutes long. This video has been watched a grand total of 73 times and gotten four likes. So not a huge success in the viral department. Going back to our statistics, I mentioned these uh, spikes. So if we zoom in on these watch time statistics, we'll see this big spike in September of 2013. Wow, I tracked that down. What video, what video was that? You may wonder. I'll show you. We're gonna mix a drink here, and in order to make this drink, you need these fine ingredients. Vodka, Guyana, and Campari, as well as some orange juice. Of course, you're making this with your loved ones around you. Uh, this is a wedding anniversary. I'm making it because it's my 10th wedding. My t the 10th anniversary of my wedding. It's been 10 years since I was married, and my wife is nowhere to be found. Where the yeah. fuck is she? Get your fucking ass up here. I'm in the garden. Sorry, baby. Another disappointment. Welcome to the world of marriage. We're making four of these because there are four of us here. Me and Christy, we're celebrating our 10th wedding anniversary, thus the drink wedding anniversary. Also, Tanya and James, who's behind the camera, if you turn the camera around and, and, and show yourself to the viewing public, <laughs> who are not married, but they're getting married soon, and we're, so we're celebrating kind of a double wedding. One for me, one for Tanya, one for James, and a smaller one for Christy, because she is small. <laughs> Very simple, an ounce of vodka in each glass. And I'm just eyeballing it. Of course, you might want to be more precise, use a jigger or something like that. But we don't really care because we've been married for 10 years and we just don't give a fuck. You can say that again. We've been married for 10 years and we just don't give a fuck. So an equal amount of this uh, anise and vanilla flavored liqueur. Have you ever puked so hard that you, your bile You've puked bile and it's actually that color. Half an ounce of Campari. You play cards until morning parties. Mm. And somebody got drunk and decided to pee. Mm. And then they would do nice. And then put it in the fridge. Elixirs. And, then and just course, a tiny drop for the mini, Christy. mini Christy. splash. Mm. There we go. I haven't even had to drink it. Finally, you want to top it off with some orange juice. And you can see that the wedding anniversary is a nice orange color. And for baby bear, just a little. <laughs> Here we go. You've made your wedding anniversary. Now pass them around and, and share them. And drink a, uh, a toast. A toast to, to, to 10 years of marital bliss. In the mini. And hopefully. That's right. And hopefully 10 and more. Many more. Yay! <clears throat> Yay! <laughs> oh. It's um, it's kind of like you get married and then, oops, I made the wrong decision. <laughs> I can't believe I'm in this for life. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, it's only been viewed 115 times. In fact, it's not even a listed video on my YouTube account. It's unlisted. If that's the biggest watch time spike, what about the biggest view spike? In terms of raw number of views, not minutes watched, going back to June 2011, 308 views in just one day. Well, it's big for us anyway. And what video was that? 610 Stompers on Bank Street. I shot this right from my front driveway, right from right in front of my house, believe it or not. All right, I'm not going to show you the whole video. You can, of course, watch it yourself. Just search for 610 Stompers on Bank Street and you'll find it. It's only been liked four times, believe it or not, but it's been viewed over a thousand times. How did so many people find this video? Well, they must have posted it uh, on some kind of social media. All right, I gotta stop watching this video. It's funny though to watch these guys dance, right? Uh, anyway, it brings up really the truth about what, how a viral video works. You know, most of us think, I certainly kind of thought that uh, the idea of a, when you hear a viral video is that it kind of spreads like a virus. From one person infects a few others and they infect a few more, people just keep forwarding a particular video on to all their friends and their friends send it on to their friends because it's just so irresistible, the content. But I don't think that that's what happens actually in most cases. In most cases, a video will just get shared in some kind of large venue. Like somebody will, if somebody publishes a link to a YouTube video in a, a major corporate mainstream uh, media venue, let's say the New York Times or Huffington Post or something like that, or if somebody very popular just shares something on social media, if it's posted to a uh, like a Facebook group that has a lot of members, boom, lots of people will watch it. Well, that's really not viral, is it? It's really just the classic effect of, uh, of a big publication that has a big audience highlighting something, and then that something will get a lot of views. Let's look, for example, at this spike in March 2018. There's a big spike in terms of number of views in even bigger, it looks even bigger, in um, watch time on March 10th, 2018, 295 watch time minutes. That's four hours and 55 minutes. Turns out it's this video, Noam Chomsky. I only started posting full episodes of Rocks really very recently. This video of Noam Chomsky was posted on Reddit. And it's just starting mid-episode. Definitely not going to play the whole episode for you here because it's lengthy. It's a half an hour. You can watch it uh, yourself. Somebody posted this video on Reddit. Of course, an incredibly popular site. And a bunch of people watched it. So that just goes to show uh, that what we think, what we call viral, isn't necessarily viral. It's more just uh, the classic publication effect. So our latest effort to go viral or die trying, uh, how about a how-to video? How-to videos, as we know, are uh, very popular on YouTube. We've been making this show about mixed drinks for a while. Surely a how to mix in it, a drink would be a good video. And we thought it would be good to start with the very first drink that we featured on this series and the very first clip we put on YouTube how to mix an amaretto sour. So I asked Jay in Montana to revisit this question, and here's what he came up with. All right, so we're going to mix an amaretto sour. Now, this is, a, this is a drink that I have a particular deep fondness for. You know, I, I love the, the deep tradition and cultural roots of amaretto. It's kind of like this TV series. It has very deep cultural Kind of like this TV series. It has very deep um, cultural You know, amaretto is a drink. Well, well, almonds, of course, are the primary flavoring component of amaretto. And, um, and you know, almonds go so deep into our history. Like in the Bible, for example, in the book of Acts, 
uh, chapter 18, verse 7, there's the part about Aaron um, having uh, the, his rod that, uh, that, that bears almonds. And, you know, I love this image of, like, being able to shake Aaron's rod and, and like, grab a handful of his nuts and just squeeze them and, and, and being able to just suck the juices right out. Oh, I just, it's a, it's a beautiful story. It's a, it's a holy story. Um, kind, of, kind of like this TV series is. Enough about the drink. Let's mix the drink. Understand that I have, in my old age, I have become a little more um, attuned to high quality um, ingredients. So I'm not going to just, you know, get any off the shelf amaretto. I'm going to make my own amaretto. So you'll need a receptacle, a large, you know, I've got a nice um, vase here that I think will be good for this. It has lots of room for it to breathe. You know, I get my almonds from a, a specialty farm in California. Um, it's actually called Aaron's Almond Farm. And so I'm just going to reach in Aaron's ball nut sack and grab out some almonds here. And what we're going to do is we're going to, we need to crush these almonds. So um, I'm just going to take each one of these and very carefully with with love and affection I'm gonna uh, just crush them all right I, I might be getting a little bit hasty here but... <laughs> okay so um, that should be probably enough right there and and just carefully you know delicately Put them in here, and I think they're right at the right consistency. We want to add some sugar. You want to just pour a little bit into your hand and then dump the rest in here. Oh, and then we need some water. I don't like to use tap water because I'm a purist. We are going to go and gather some pure Montana stream water for, for this beautiful bottle of Amaretto. So here we go. So I am here out on uh, a creek near Missoula where I am going to, um, to get myself a, uh, a quantity of very fresh um, mountain water uh, coming down this creek. Um, it's pristine. It's uh, unblemished by anything other than just pure natural. You know, you've seen those Coors ads about how great their water is. Well, let me tell you, the water here in Montana is like no other. So I'm just gonna get myself a little bit here out of the creek. Um, I don't know if you can see that. I've got this nice, um, it's a little kind of off color a little bit, but it's, I tell you, this is the good stuff. So uh, now we have our water, we have our receptacle with our sugar and our crushed almonds, and we're just gonna pour this in here like so. You can see that it, it uh, looks uh, wet and kind of crunchy um, and then you just have to let this sit for about nine months um, that's the gestation period uh, for a really high quality bottle of amaretto so we're gonna put this down here because um, this is a cabinet that I never look into hopefully there's nothing living down there and we'll check on, in on it in a minute or no nine months so we have uh, it's been nine months and we're gonna check on our amaretto now. Um, it's been sitting here, oh, oh my heavens, look at it. Wow, it's exactly what we were hoping for. We've got a nice, nice firm square head. Uh, it, it's got a, a, a pleasing, bumpy texture to it. That's exactly what you want when you're making your own amaretto at home. We've got everything else we need to make our amaretto sour. This is one of my favorite amaretto sour glasses. It looks like it has genital warts, which, you know, is a, a pleasing thing when you're drinking something sour and yellow. We need some ice. Now, ice is the soul of a cocktail, in my opinion. I have, I started ordering my ice online. Um, this is Les Demoiselles Artist Anal Ice which um, I get on the no, internet. No, 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 What? Artist anal? No. Artisanal. What? That's artisanal. All I know is that this is good shit. As you can see, these, these cubes come in individually wrapped packages. 
You like the sound? I love this. This, listen to that. I mean, you don't get that kind of... Uh, <sighs> that kind of resonance from normal ice from your freezer. So, we're going to open our homemade um, amaretto. Be careful removing the lid. Um, and then you want to pour about one ounce of this into the glass. You know, when you're really making an artist anal um, amaretto sour with homemade amaretto and artist anal ice in this fantastic glass, you have to use the best. And this stuff, I mean, God, I paid like $3 for it at the grocery store um, about an hour ago. So it's clearly fresh. So you want to add um, about an ounce of this. I've just covered this. This is called the um, Hitachi Magic Wand. Um, it's, it's a, um, well, it's, they couldn't have picked a better name because it is truly magic. So you just turn it on and, and, and then you thrust. And you get this nice, oh my God. Mm. Oh, who knows where, who knows where that's been? I mean, in like what drinks and stuff. Um, and now you have a fully mixed drink that is really um, up to the standards that we've set in this fantastic television program. So, cheers. I would pronounce that as distressingly piquant. All right. Well, there you have it. You can't say that we're not keeping up with the craft cocktail revolution. Let's see how that, uh, how that video is doing statistically, shall we? I see we did get a, a big view spike when we originally posted it on social media. And it's kind of languished ever since. Primarily, our viewership has been from the United States with a little bit of Austria, United Kingdom, uh, we did get one view from Bulgaria, but the, uh, yeah, the question, of course, uh, 168 views, 168 total views. If we compare that to the original Amaretto Sour clip with 2,882 views, but it's been online over 10 years. I guess that's a wrap for this episode. You know, it's just me here in this editing studio. Jay is on the other side of the country, but I hope to see him very soon. We're doing a live event in Bloomington on the 26th of June, so if you're seeing this before then, I highly recommend that you make your way to Bloomington and uh, join us for that. Tickets are on sale now. You'll find them at thecomedyattic.com, and it is a fundraiser for WFHB Community Radio. We're celebrating our 25th anniversary, our tarnished silver anniversary, if you will, the anniversary of our second season and the digital re-release of our second season. This has been Rocks number 99, Go Viral or Die Trying. I am Editor B at an undisclosed location. If I don't see you in Bloomington, just wait for our 100th episode because it's going to be so much better than this.